Good afternoon. Today there will be a demo session on Core Java. I am the trainer for today's class. I have done my master's in information technology. I have 10 plus years of experience as developer and trainer. I have worked in IT industry in Hyderabad and in Singapore for three years. So today's demo class, we will cover the following topics. Introduction to Java, advantages of Java, history of Java, OOPS concepts, environment setup, editors, first programming language. So what is Java? Java is platform independent programming language. So in simple words, we can define Java as write once and run anywhere. So what do you mean by this? What do you mean by platform independent programming? What do you mean by write once and run anywhere? So Java in Java program, what happens is when we write the Java program and save it in a dot Java file, you can the compiler of Java, which is there in JDK Java runtime environment. The compiler is Java C compiler. Java C compiler converts the source code, the dot Java file into a class file, which is the byte code. The byte code is converted in such a way that any platform will be able to understand it. So the main person who makes Java platform independent is its Java runtime environment, the Java C compiler and Java interpreter, which are there in your JDK package. That is the reason we said write once, run anyway. Once you write the program and the program is deployed, you the you can set the dot plus file to any platform. What are the key advantages of learning Java programming? Java program is object oriented programming language. Everything in Java is based, is has object model. You know, your reference is created for your class. And through this object, we can do various, various actions in the class. Functions can be called. How much uh, useful object is in Java and what makes how Java object makes Java special. It is platform independent, unlike many other programming languages, including C, C++, when Java is compiled, it is not compiled into platform specific machine, rather into platform independent bytecode. The bytecode is distributed over the web and interpreted by virtual machine on whichever platform it is being run on. We just discussed it, no, no. And the Java is designed to be easy to learn. If you understand the basic concepts of OOPS, it would, you can master Java. It is secure. Why is Java in so much demand in the market? One of the main reasons is it is secure. With Java secure feature, it enables to develop virus-free, tamper-free systems. Authentication techniques are based on public key encryption. It is architecture neutral. Java compiler generates an architecture neutral object file format which makes the compiled code executable on many processes with the presence of Java runtime system. What are the main features of Java? It is multi-threaded with Java's multi-threaded feature. It is possible to write programs that can perform many tasks simultaneously. This design feature allows the developers to construct interactive applications that can run smoothly. So when we do a multi-threading topic, you can see how at one time you can run more than one program. It's an interpreting language, interpreted Java bytecode is translated on the fly to native machine instructions and is not stored anywhere. The development process is more rapid and analytical since the linking is an incremental and lightweight process. So Java is an interpreter in Java and it can read your bytecode. No? It is for execution of the bytecode. The interpreter is used for execution of bytecode. It has high performance with the use of just-in-time compilers. Java enables high performance. It is distributed. Java is designed for the distributed environment of the internet. You, you can, you know, thousand clients can connect to your Java, to your application, which is done in Java in any part of the world. And it is dynamic. Java is considered to be more dynamic than C or C++ since it is designed to adapt to an evolving environment. Java programs can carry extensive amount of runtime information. 
that can be used to verify and resolve accesses to objects on runtime. So James Gosling was the first person who started Java in 1991. James Gosling initiated Java language project in June 1991 for use in one of his many set top box projects. The language initially called Oak after an oak tree that stood outside Gosling's office also went by the name Green and ended up later being renamed as Java from a list of random words. Sun released the first public implementation as Java 1.0 in 1995. It promised write once and run anywhere, Vora, providing no cost, no run times on popular platforms. On 13th November 2006, Sun released much of the Java has free and open source software under the terms of JNU General Public License, GPL. On 8th May 2007, Sun finished the process making all of Java's core code free and open source, aside from a small portion of code to which Sun did not hold the copyright. So it was started by Sun. Okay. Tools you will need. For performing the examples discussed in this tutorial, you will need Pentium 200 megahertz computer and with minimum of 64 megabytes of RAM. You will also need the following. You can use Linux, Java JDK 8. You can use JDK version, even the latest version and uh, Microsoft Notepad or any other text editor. So we will write the source code. We'll write the program in a Notepad in an editor. And we will save it as a with dot Java extension, and then you compile and run the program. You can download JDK from internet, setting up the path for Windows, assuming you have installed Java in C program files. Once you have installed Java JDK folder in your system, you can set the path for it. You can go and set the environment variables. Right click on the compute and select properties. Click the environment variables button under the advanced tab. Now alter the path variable so that it also contains the path to the Java executable example. If the path is currently set to C Windows System 32, then change your path to C Windows. You can follow these steps and you can set path in the environment variable. Once you set the path in environment variable, whenever we are running and executing the program, we need not set the path again and again. So popular Java editors. To write your Java programs, you will need a text editor. There are even more sophisticated IDS tool available in the market, but for now you can consider one of the following notepad, on Windows machine, you can use any simple text editor like Notepad, TextPad, NetBeans. We will be using Notepad for now. NetBeans, a Java IDE tool that is open source and free, which can be downloaded from this link. Eclipse, a Java IDE developed by the Eclipse open source community can be downloaded from this. So it's up to you which editor you want to go for. So let us see a simple Java program public class, my first Java program. I'll just go to run, open the notepad, okay? So let us write a simple first Java program, okay? So two forward slashes, these are the comment lines. What do you mean by comment line? Comment line is something, anything you write inside the comment lines is ignored by the compiler. It is only for documentation purpose or it is only for the user to understand what we are doing. So for example, this is our first Java program. So I'm writing here first Java. Then So in this step, what I'm doing, I'm declaring my class public is a keyword class is a keyword and my first program is a user defined variable it's an identifier okay so what do you mean by keyword keyword when you install your java and in, uh, in your system we are given certain keywords they are already inbuilt they have certain function 
and we have to follow the syntax if i write p has public and c has uh, p has capital and c has capital in public in class the compiler will show error so java is a strictly formatted language we have to follow the syntax okay so public and class both are keywords what public is doing we will see later it is one of the important keyword to understand the name itself i think you can understand what it means and class i am creating my class and this is class name so this class name you can write whatever name you want to write to your class it is your wish but it's good practice that you keep the class name um, what you're doing in your program keep it connected to that if it i'm writing bank account details so i can't just write public class details so that will be um, the user if there is some other person who is coming and seeing your program i'll not be able to understand then i have to go to so many things to understand which class is doing what but if i write the class name related to what my program is doing it becomes easy in when the development environment and testing and okay so public class my first program so in this for my first program m you can write uh, how there is no nothing that you have to start with a capital letter but follow certain syntax see how it will look if i just write it like this my first program you can see no it looks so unprofessional just i'm doing i'm just doing something it looks like that so you follow certain even though it is your own name but make it neat okay public class my first program so how whenever you declare the class parenthesis we use to start the class from here the class begins okay this is starting your class okay and after i write my program whatever i want to do inside the class i have to close the class so this syntax if we don't write it we don't close it when you are compiling your program so the compiler will show error it will throw error is it clear so what i have done i have created my first class public class my first program and then opening brackets close bracket every bracket in java when you open it you there will be a closing bracket so how you are creating the nest inside that is up to you is according to the program and requirement what you want to write but if you open a bracket you close the bracket okay so inside this i am going to say public static void me string arg argument right and then the next step again i'm going to have an opening bracket so what does that mean whatever it is no what is public static void mean you don't know right now but you know that i have again put a opening bracket that means the opening bracket should have a closing bracket now comes you can see here public static void main string args this is function so this is actually the main method we call main function so what is function what is what it is going to do we will have a separate topic on functions how you create function how you call function why you need a function if you have if you have done c and c++ then understanding functions is very easy okay but the name itself shows no function function means doing some work so why you need a function why you write a method is it is going to do some specific work for you but here again in functions we have user defined functions and we also have system defined functions but this is system defined function so this is not your function this is the function which is given by a java syntax to us so we have to follow the syntax as it is i can't write p 
capital s capital this is small string is a class and the syntax is s has to be capital okay don't worry thinking that there are so many things how am i going to memorize it and how will i remember uh, this now it looks overwhelming but you keep doing your programs and after some time of practice all these things becomes very handy for you okay so again you see something public here hmm. public means it's accessible by everyone it has more uh, access public you know this accessing is a very important thing in java you can rest restrict the access you can make it private uh, you'll come to know about different access modifiers and access okay so static is something which you which is not changed it is constant that static also is a very important keyword which can be quite confusing and we will understand in detail by by going through some examples but right now here it is a it is a like it is a system defined function so we just write public static void again this void keyword means no return type okay so then in functions when we do the functions topic uh, you will come to know that uh, we will have void and we will also have functions without using void so what is void doing and if you don't write void what is your function doing you will understand it more clearly there but right now understand void is a no return type and what can be made it's understood it is a name of the function but again understand this is system defined function it's not your function my first program is my identifier it is user defined name i can write it anything but main is again system defined actually public static void main is a main function of it's a heart of your program okay outside uh, we can write so many classes and you can write so many functions but if you don't see like the your main uh, Uh, interpreter the program will be compiled but don't write public static void main and uh, run the program it will not show output okay so if you want uh, in execution if you want to see some output for your program you have to call the functions variables and whatever you want to do you have to do it inside your public static void main you can do it outside but calling we do it inside the public static void main and then there are different steps in java which we will learn later now can you see public static void main is our main method but the brackets here is having some arguments so again in functions we have two types of functions parameterized functions and non parameterized functions the functions which have parameters within them arguments within them they are parameterized functions so here it is actually taking string arguments and it is an array okay so what is an array and what is string is a class is a type of a data type all this we will learn in the next class variables data types okay conditional conditions logical operator different types of operators we learn in our next class right so for now just understand that there was a public static void main is a function it is a system defined function it has argument string array okay so you know so what is string string takes characters okay a set of characters hello hi fine it takes the set of characters now what i am going to do inside this program i am going to just say print hello system dot out dot print hello and semicolon okay so what i am doing in my program it's a very simple program where i am going to print hello what will be the output The output will be hello. Okay. So what is system dot out dot printlen? Again, see system dot out dot printlen is a system defined function. 
so there are some functions some keywords which your jdk your library java library gives to us and it is it's already the work the task for those keywords is already defined so we just use them okay you have to just we can directly use the keywords so system dot out dot printl and also is a predefined function and what is this function doing it is going used for display for execution of your program anything you want to display on your command prompt we use system dot out dot printl for execution okay system is to your system monitor okay dot out is to show to the output device no what is your output device and print is to write it on it like print it on it so system dot out dot print ln will print on your command prompt hello again syntax in java is very important see like can you see it is the inside double quotes if i miss putting this double quote you know i just I uh, am writing the code, and I just forget to write double code here. When you run this program, the compiler will show error that in this line there is error. So you close anything which is text in text format. You use double code. If it is a number, hello, one, two, three, four. If I have to write some number, plus is a concatenating operator. Then again, what is concatenating operator? I will let you know. Okay, it is not an addition operator. So numbers can be without double quotes. Every sentence in Java ends with semicolon. Fine. This you have to remember. Every sentence in Java ends with semicolon. Now see my public class first program. Did it, did I end this with semicolon? No. So it is not a sentence. It was class. So the way we begin the class is through curly braces and then close it. Again, public static void mean I am not ending it with a semicolon, no. So that means it's not ending here. Something else. So curly braces. Then I do I lot of things inside this. Then I close my function. But if I'm closing semicolon here, it means this is the end of the statement. This statement ends here. So next statement, if I write. In the next line, if I write anything, it is an independent statement. Again, double quotes. Again, I have to end this statement with semicolon. So these two are different statements, independent statements, and they are doing different tasks. They will display uh, different. Uh, Text a different message. What we have given within them. First, we create our class. We we declare the class, begin the class. Then you write your main method. Inside the main method, we are writing our just printing. Hello, my just my first Java program. Right. Then you close your function. See opening and closing, and then close this. This syntax is very important. Anywhere, if you do a small mistake, it can show error. Okay. Now I am going to save this file. You can give any name to your file. Okay. But the best uh, practice is whichever class is having your main method, you give your file name the same name. So, for instance, in my program. My class, my first, my first program is having public static void main method, right? So I'm going to name the file my first program dot Java. This is how you save your file. Dot Java is an extension for all the Java programs. After you write your program, you save the name of the file with extension dot Java. Now, for for instance, if I have saved this, my first demo dot Java, so it will take the name. There will be no problem. Uh, you can write whatever name you want to write to your file. Now, what happens after you save the file? 
once the file is saved what we do we have to compile the program compile your java program okay now what is compile the name itself shows no compiling means checking testing it will check whether is are there any errors in your program syntax error or logical error and if there is any error the program will not compile so what a compiler will do the compiler will check for the errors and then once it is fully fine it will convert it into a byte code that is it will convert the dot java file into dot class file so once there are no errors it is converted into the executable file no dot class is your executable file and the compiler in java is java c this is a java c compiler i mean why is it given java c what it means it's it's a fixed thing no it is system defined even when you install jdk and go to the bin folder you will see this exe there java and java c files will be there along with other library files so java c is a compiler and the best thing in uh, java the compilation in java is it compiles from first to last it goes through the whole all the steps and then it will throw the errors at the end so how do you compile the file see you have to go to command prompt you open the command prompt like here i can type cmd and then i can go to the command prompt okay at command prompt i can go to the command prompt go to the command prompt then you have to go to the your directory it is core java wherever i am saving my file where is your file saved my first java my first program go to the directory go to the path then we'll set path here this is very important you know set the class path so c jdk version bin then you can also the same so i'll let you know i will give you notes for this how you set path maybe we can do together setting the environment for java you can also set environment variables as we saw in the ppt you can go to start and then you can go to the control panel and go open the environment variables and there you can set the path if we set the path in environment variables we we will not do this okay we we have no need to set comment set path here we can directly compile the program java c file name dot java so what is your file name my first java program no so what you'll say java c my first program dot java if there are no errors you can see the cursor will come back that shows there are no errors in your program what do you mean by no errors dot class file is created so when you go to the folder core java folder you will see an another file which will be my first program and when you right click and see the pro in the properties you can see it is a dot class file it is a byte code okay this dot class file is run when you want to execute you have to execute this dot class file so your program is compiled what is the next step next step i have to run the program that is main main thing what is my program doing how will you know so you have to run so java is a java interpreter java c is a java compiler java is a java interpreter java interpreter again java is a keyword so it is used for execution of your program running your program so i need not say dot class file i'll just write java my first program and enter once you enter what is the output you will see hello exclamatory mark and then my first java program this will be displayed on your command prompt this is what we have asking to print it no 
So you can see the output, both of them you can see on your command prompt. Fine. So Java C is a compiler, Java is an interpreter. You save your file name by giving extension Java. Then you go to the command prompt, you go to your file path, and there you go and compile your program. Step one is Java C file name dot Java. Once it is compiled successfully, then we have to run the program to execute our program. So the interpreter is Java. Java is the keyword. You say Java, my file name. Okay. So when you run it, you can see the out. Fine. Yes. Now, see, if we have an another scenario here no, where I did not match the name of my class file to the class which I have created in my program. My file name and my uh, class name is different. Again, same thing. No, I'll go and uh, I'll say compile the file. Java C my first demo dot Java. Your file is successfully compiled. The cursor comes back. And then what I will do? I have I want to run the program. And then I'll say Java my first demo and run and it will give error this line will give error it will say main method class not found it will give exception to you it will throw an exception and then and and it's so confusing for us and we don't understand that what is main method class and so what happens is you write my first demo right this is compiled it is converted into but when you go and see in your uh, folder, the dot class file name will be my first program. Because the dot class, your main method is in which class this dot class file is created. So when I'm running the program, then I have to remember that what was the file name. I can't run with, no, if you give, don't match your file name with your class name, you can't run with this file name. You have to remember the file name which you have given to the class inside which your main method is there. Okay, so what is your main method? My first Java program. Then you have to come here and say Java, my first program. Then you can see the output. So now you understand, yeah, that it is, um, it's a good way to match your file name with your main method class name. So no confusion, no then. Then you just compile your program and run the program. Also this naming conventions and all, when you are working in the real time environment, they will specify in the documentation because a lot of people will make such mistakes. Just programming is not that, you know, you just write and you know, they will give you very strict naming convention will be there. Class name should start with capital letter. Function name should be like this. It should be in this format. And we have to follow that naming convention because there are going to be so many functions, constructor, class, interfaces, so many things we'll create. So every if there is a naming convention, we can differentiate one from the other. Otherwise, it can create a it can create confusion. So we have written a first Java program. Okay and how you compile the program, how you run the program. It is, it looks, it's interesting, no? Yeah, Java is, well, it's interesting, though it may look tough. If you have no little bit of programming language, it is interesting, okay? So tomorrow we'll see how to create an object, variables, operators. If we have time, conditional statements, loops also, we can see. At the end of the course, we will do a project based on all the concepts which we learned in the course so that you can get a hands-on experience of a real-time project. Also, we'll help you in getting additional uh, resources from where you can read uh, in detail about each topic if you are interested to know more and uh, read it in uh, get the deep knowledge of the subject, I will let you know the different sources from where you can get the information. So at the end of the course, you will receive the certificate of achievement with your name on it that you have completed 
today's uh, core java training course thank you for attending the demo please share your feedback and contact us for queries related to course scope schedule references cost and payment options